In this Baldur's Gate 3 video, let's take a look at some of the unique, special and secret spells that cannot be learned in the conventional way as part of character progression, but rather only found through exploration or unlocked as part of a special items feature. Now with that out of the way, let's get nerdy. First up is the third level necromancy spell, Paralyzing Ray which functions exactly as described, paralyzing and incapacitating a target for a duration of two turns, meaning that they lose all of their actions, reactions and bonus actions, as well as concentration if they were trying to maintain that as part of a spell. The paralyzed condition also has a dramatic effect on the damage output potential, as all ranged, melee and spell attack rolls are done with advantage, and successful attacks within melee range are automatically critical hits. In order to gain access to the Paralyzing Ray spell, you will need to find and equip the Burnished Ring, which is lootable from a body of a dead spectre, which can be found in Hope's Prison in the House of Hope. Next up is the level 6 transmutation spell Flesh to Gold, which in essence is a unique variant to the Flesh to Stone spell, which upon the initial failed save restrains the target, meaning that they can't take any actions, bonus actions or reactions. If the target fails a further 2 constitution saves on the rounds that follow, the target becomes petrified, turning into solid gold. The only way to gain access to the Flesh to Gold spell is by obtaining the Sign Trade Visa from the Tollmaster of Wraithwind Tollhouse, Gerengoth Thorm. And I won't be spoiling any more than that, but go and check it out at the Moonrise Towers. Next up is the level 2 evocation spell, Shah's Darkness, which functions pretty much the same as the normal darkness spell inflicting the blinded condition to all of the characters within its area of effect of 10 feet. Shah's Darkness can only be cast through equipping the legendary item Shah's Spear of Evening, and is obtained as a reward for completing the Chosen of Shah questline, and specifically convincing Shadowheart not to kill Nightsong in the Shadowfell. The added benefit of casting Shah's Blessing through the Shah's Spear of Evening is that you also gain blind immunity, which means that the caster can fight within the darkness created by the spell, attacking opponents with advantage, while their attacks against you are with disadvantage. This condition, Shah's Blessing, also gives you an additional 1d6 damage against creatures affected by Shah's Darkness when attacking with Shah's Spear of Evening. Next up is the level 2 illusion spell Shadow Blade, creating a short sword dealing 2 to 16 psychic damage on a successful hit. Furthermore, all attack rolls made with Shadow Blade in Dim Light or Darkness are done so with advantage, making this a fantastic spell for melee oriented characters with limited spell slots like the Arcane Trickster Rogue, Close Quarters Gloomstalker Ranger, or Hexblade Warlock. The Shadowblade spell is cast through equipping the Shadowblade Ring, which is obtained as a reward for completing the Find Arabella's Parents questline. Before we crack on with the spell list, please don't forget to smash that like button, as it helps the channel out more than you can imagine. Next up on the list is the level 5 necromancy spell Dethrone, which deals a very healthy 10d6 plus 20 necrotic damage on a failed constitution save to a single target within 90 feet. Dethrone can only be cast by using a scroll of Dethrone or add it into the wizard spellbook by scribing it. In Baldur's Gate 3, there are only two Dethrone spells available, both of which can be obtained within the caster section of the Sorcerer's Vault. Next up is the absolutely amazing level 5 evocation spell, Artistry of War and is a significantly more powerful version of the Magic Missile spell, summoning six Master Strategists, each of which deals 2d6 plus 6 force damage against a target of your choosing, without requiring a saving throw or an attack roll. This means the Artistry of War spell inflicts between 48 and 108 guaranteed force damage in exchange for a level 5 spell slot. The Artistry of War spell can only be learned by a wizard scribing it from the Scroll of Artistry of War, 
which is obtained by reading the Red Knight's final stratagem in the Vault of the Sorcerer's Sundries. Next up is the level 5 necromancy spell Dance Macabre, which summons 4 menacing ghouls to fight by your side. When attacking, these ghouls have a chance to paralyze the targets, and as I have gone through multiple times by now, paralysis is a really good or really bad condition, depending on if it's you being paralyzed or you doing the paralyzing. The Dance Macabre spell can only be acquired by unlocking and reading the Necromancy of Thay, which is part of one of the main quests, Unlock the Ancient Tomb. In order to do so, you will have to find a Dark Amethyst, and pass 3 wisdom saving throws of increasing difficulty. This is a really fun quest, and I won't spoil it for you. Go and check it out. Next up is the level 1 transmutation spell, Brand the Weak which in essence grants the caster the ability to make one opponent vulnerable to bludgeoning, slashing or piercing damage. Upon casting the spell with a bonus action, you get to choose from one of the associated spell effects, namely Slash the Weak, Bludgeon the Weak or Pierce the Weak, each of which doubles the damage output for that specific damage type. In order to gain access to the Brand the Weak spell, you will need to find a Jaknir Jira, who is located within the Githyanki Infirmary and Hatchery location located directly below the Rosymorn Monastery. Or a easy non-spoilery tip would be to just follow Laziel's companion questline. Next up from the School of Evocation is the level 4 spell Koreshka's Favor. Upon evoking the Draconic Goddess Koreshka's Favor, the caster gets to select from one of six different spell effects. Each of these spell effects grants the caster resistance to a specific damage type, as well as an added bonus to the damage dealt, equal to their proficiency modifier, and grants the user temporary use of two different spells. The Sizzling Cataclysm spell effect is associated with Acid Damage, and grants access to Mal's Acid Arrow and Hunger of Hadar spells. Whereas the Deadlier Than Arsenic spell effect is all about poison damage and comes with the availability of cloud kill and ray of sickness once per short rest. The bone shaking thunder spell effect is you guessed it associated with thunder damage and shatter and destructive wave are the two spells made available. The bolts of doom option is all about lightning damage and gives the caster access to chain lightning and lightning bolt for the duration of the spell each available once per short rest. If you're more interested in gaining resistance to and gaining additional damage for cold type spells, then the Frost of Dark spell effect is more your speed, which also adds the Cone of Cold and Ice Storm spells to your repertoire. Last but certainly not least is Flame of Wrath, which is obviously associated with fire damage and gives us access to the ever-powerful Fireball and the extremely useful and versatile Battlefield Control spell, Wall of Fire. As always, thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. What did you think about the unique and secret spells listed? Are there any ones that I might have missed? Please let me know in the comments down below, like, subscribe and I truly hope to see you again soon. Stay nerdy.